I think that a lot of people see canonicalization as kind of topical grouping, mm. which kind of isn't right at all. They need to the pages need to be either identical or near near, near identical. There. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that's what it boils down to. Canonicalization is about duplication management. So basically, you want to remove duplications so that we don't have to crawl things multiple times and we don't have to like um, render and index things multiple times. And we also do not serve them all the time like the same things basically in three different URLs. That's not good search results, really, right? <laughs>
how the signals are weighted, which ones are more preferential to others, because sometimes I see that maybe, this is just my theory, that maybe Google puts more weighting to signals that are more likely to have been implemented by a human rather than maybe mm. an auto-generated setting. I don't know if that has any... Well, um, duplication uh, and deduplication is actually done without much human interaction. So mm -hmm. this is all automated signals. Right. Um, but we do like content fingerprinting. Uh, we look at things like uh, what is what is the the gist of it really? What are the, the what's the information here? How does this relate to the site structure? What does it say in the, in the site map? Um, so we're looking at a bunch of different factors, but they are mostly technical factors. Okay. Yeah, and we are basically scoring them on an ongoing basis. So it's not that we're like determining it once and then just stick to it. We are always looking at the fresh content that we got from crawl and then have a look at like, does this, does this change? If it changed, is it now very close to what it has been before? Now maybe something that is, uh, has been a duplication is no longer a duplicate because it has changed its content. So that's absolutely possible, right? But sometimes, especially when pretty much everything is showing up in the same URL structure and it's maybe like different language versions of the same thing, uh, but it is the same content then we might end up with a scoring that is very similar. So we have both versions and let's say like one is 0 0.49 and mm -hmm. one is 0 0.51 uh, of what we think is a duplication of the other, then it's really hard to pick which one will be the canonical and that can change, right? A, a change in, I don't know, how we crawl things or how the, how the, the crawler has uh, fetched data and, and, and how it has been fetching the other pages beforehand might influence uh, us to have like a tiny little bit of a jump in these two numbers and then the other one is the canonical. So make sure that you're trying to give us as clear a signal as possible and not confuse the, the algorithms uh, that are working with figuring out which one is the duplication of which other thing. Because if we are having two, in the, um, two equal pieces of content, then how do we know which one we should pick? Exactly. And you don't want Google to be in that position where they feel like they have to pick for you or Googlebot feels like it has yes. to pick for you. <laughs> and it makes everything more complicated on your side as well, especially yeah. if you're using things like Search Console, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are we're gathering data and showing you data based on the canonical. So if it starts flapping between two URLs, then that's going to look really weird. Mm. So anything else um, that you would say uh, is unclear about it or is there something that um, makes your life really hard when it comes to canonicalization? I think it's figuring out the th certain thresholds you need to get to override Google's decision on what is the preferred URL because mm -hmm. we can align all of our signals on site. But I saw that John Mueller on the Ask Google Webmaster um, video about canonicalization, he said that there's two aspects. You've got um, kind of the on-site signals, but you've also got what you uh, what Google thinks that the user would most mm -hmm. like to have a look at. That so, is true, yeah. yeah. And that depends on a bunch of different things. Uh, so for instance, um, we might canonicalize one language version over the other if, if you're telling us that all of them are canonical at the same time and they have pretty much the same content, uh, especially if it's in the same language, just for different countries. Um, then we might show the version to the searcher that the searcher is in, in the country of. So if we have a DE version and an AT version, so the German version and the, an Austrian version, that are pretty much the same. They use the same currency. They might have even the same price. If you're unlucky, uh, we might show different URLs to searchers depending on where they are from, right? It makes more sense for a customer in uh, Austria to see the Austrian version of the website rather than the German one, even though the German one is the canonical. So that might be a little confusing and, and misleading. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from your side? Yes, so there was one question I had in that, so if you if Google accepts the canonical tag on a page, that it will ignore any unique content on that page. But then that's interesting because surely the pages have to be identical in the first place. This is something I've heard, that if there's any unique content on the canonicalized page, it'll be ignored. So how would that work? Would the canonical tag not be accepted then because they're slightly different pages? So that depends on how different the unique content is. Okay. If you have mostly the same content and then maybe have like one sentence that is slightly different, then we might still think that it's pretty much the same thing and then we would not see the unique content necessarily if we think that it's just a copy of another page that is canonical. If this page has the canonical, then we will probably see the, the uh, unique content there as well because it's the page that we picked. However, if the content is completely different or different enough 
for the algorithms to decide that this is not a duplication, then the canonical is pointless. Mm -hmm. Unless there's another page that happens or another URL that happens to point to the exact same page, then it becomes interesting again because then we have two different pointers um, to the same thing. And we, we get that oftentimes that uh, people are like linking two pages and accidentally have like some, I don't know, some URL parameter that basically gets ignored. Uh, or doesn't actually matter, or there's like a, a slightly difference in the in the way that the URL looks like. Um, maybe you have like a slash de something something, and then like a slash de uh, something something question mark cache equals false or something like that. That doesn't really matter. Uh, then we might canonicalize to one of these pages and probably the one that does not have parameters and stuff. But that also is debatable. It might also happen that we canonicalize something with parameters. But that way you're again making it harder for us to pick the a canonical because if you're not saying like, oh, this is specifically the canonical we want, then it's back to guesswork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's the problem. People are just trying to group pages topically maybe with canonicalization, but that's not that's how it hard. works. That's not how it works, no. And Thank you for confirming yeah, that. <laughs> canonical tags and canonicalization is about reducing duplication. Yes. That's what it is for. Exactly. Awesome. Rachel, thank you so much for being here and talking a little bit about canonicalization with me. And uh, I think that was useful and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good time. Bye bye. Hey everyone, I hope you liked the previous episode. Next episode, me and Glenn are going to discuss site moves, right? Site moves, domain name changes, URL migrations and more. So stay tuned and check it out.